Good morning, class, and welcome back to K-pop University. In today's episode, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Today, we're not going to be looking at another K-pop group, but rather answering a question that most new K-pop fans have. How do I get into a new K-pop group? Well, today, we are going to be doing just that. So, for today's lesson, I'm going to be assuming that you have absolutely zero experience on K-pop. You have no clue about any of the groups that are out there, and you haven't heard one K-pop term yet. So, let's get started, shall we? First of all, welcome to the glorious world of Korean pop music. You may have had a friend who introduced you to the culture, a music video might have popped up in your YouTube recommended feed, or you may have seen a couple of hit songs on iTunes' top list. But the world of K-pop is so large, you probably don't even know where to start. There are so many groups out there. How do I know which is the right one for me? Well, that's one problem that most beginner fans have. Nowadays, it seems that there's an infinite amount of K-pop groups out there. Where do I start? Well, this is probably the second hardest part for most beginner fans out there. To start off, you may want to check out some popular K-pop artists first. Successful, well-known, and worldwide groups, such as Big Bang, Super Junior, or To Anyone. Names that you've probably seen before on like YouTube, iTunes, or Spotify. Experiment a little. Take a quick listen to their songs. Completely disregard the language barrier and just enjoy music. It's something that all of us can do. If you don't like one song, just simply move on to the next one. Just be sure to keep an open mind. This is is a brand new culture to you after all. The genre of K-pop is so vast and versatile, you're bound to come across a song that's your style. Into slow-tempoed ballad songs? Beast and 2AM are probably for you. Like powerful hip-hop music? Then BTS and GOT7 are your jams. Everyone has their own taste in music. Just keep searching until you found the group that's just right for you. Now let's say you found a group. We'll use the K-pop group Big Bang as an example here. Congratulations, you found a group that's exactly your style. So, where to next? Well, now that you have a few of their songs under your belt, it's time to do what most music listeners don't really do. Get to know the members. Get to know the members? What is this? K-pop bachelor? Now slow down, my friend. Let me explain. In the role of K-pop, it is essential to know the members of the group that you like. Think of it like making friends. Now, K-pop groups vary in terms of size. Some have as little as three members, and some have as many as 13. In this case, Big Bang has five members. Taeyong, G-Dragon, T.O.P., Daesung, and Sungri. Get to know their names and match name with face. But Nat, they all look the same. Shh. Don't be racist. Just do it. Remember, K-pop idols are people too. Awesome. Now that you know the names and faces of the members, you need to know the positions of each member within that group. Now, there are many positions that a K-pop group member can take. These are leader, main vocal, lead vocal, sub vocal, main rapper, lead rapper, main dancer, lead dancer, magne, and visual. There are also other positions that fans make up personally, such as bias wrecker and pseudo magne, but we'll get to those another time. Now I know what you guys may be thinking, knowing all of these positions may be a little bit overwhelming, so let's just focus on the primary positions as of now. These are vocals, rappers, dancers, leader, and magne. Five. Now each member in a K-pop group holds at least one position, obviously with some more than others. I'll explain the details more in depth in a separate video from this one, but for this lesson, all you need to know is that each member has their own positions. In the case of Big Bang, G-Dragon is the main rapper and leader, Taeyang is the main vocalist and main dancer, T.O.P is the eldest and main rapper, Daesung is the main vocalist, and Sungri is the magne and lead vocalist. Now along the way of learning each member, you may pick a bias member, and in K-pop, bias is a fancy term for your favorite member. For all you viewers out there, if you're already a K-pop fan, let me know who your biases are in the comment section down below. Alright, so now you know the names, faces, and the positions of each member, and you might have picked a bias along the way. Now what? After all of this, depending on how successful your group becomes, you have the option to watch them on variety or reality shows. Professor, Professor, what's a variety show? Glad you asked Nathan from seven years ago. Think of variety shows as of reality TV shows in America, but with less drama. Idols are invited to participate in the show to show off their charms and to promote their most recent album. Some popular variety shows are Weekly Idol, You Heal, Sketchbook, and We Got Married. Watching these shows can help you form more genuine bonds with your favorite K-pop idols. Because on these shows, idols can act as geeky, adorable, and dorky as they want. But at the same time, they can be as shy, timid, and as awkward as they want to. <coughs> NCT Tale. And sometimes if a group is successful enough, they can have their own variety show. Some examples of this are Blackpink TV, IOI's Land Cable Friends, and Showtime with Mamamoo and G-Friend. Through these variety and reality shows, you can get to know the idols on a deeper level. You get to know their personal 
personality, your backstories, and sometimes you get to know a couple of weird facts about your favorite idols. And by now, by KPU standards, you are now fully invested into a K-pop group. All that you need to do from this point on is to support them in any way that you can. Buy their albums, buy their merchandise, buy tickets to their next concert. And if you're broke like me, just listen to their music. Spread the love for that group by talking about them to your friends. Share any of their music on your social media. And maybe, just maybe, you can gain the ability to spaz out over them. Now what does spazzing out mean? Well, um, here's a few examples of that. All right, one plane ticket to Seoul, please. She's just a month younger than me. Don't you tell me that it can't work. It can work. Don't tell me that hashtag Youngkyo can't work. Jihyo, baby, I love you. Excuse me, sir. Excuse me, sir. One plane ticket to Seoul, please. And then after this, wash, rinse, and repeat over and over and over again. Expand your boundaries and introduce yourself to new groups. Be curious and branch out. The more versatile you are, the better you can relate to most K-pop fans out there. Now get out there, my friend. Get listening and start spazzing. And with that, you know just a little bit more about K-pop culture. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of K-pop University. For this episode, I really wanted to reach out to the new K-pop fans out there. Like babies, K-pop fans are born every single day. I know the world of K-pop is so large, some new fans maybe get lost and probably don't even know where to start. If you're a new K-pop fan yourself, I hope you guys can use this video as to helping yourself getting into your first K-pop group. If you're just a casual listener, I hope you guys can take this new video into account if you want to get into new groups and expand your boundaries. And if you're a long-time listener, please go ahead and share this video to some of your friends who are probably new to their genre. If you have any questions about K-pop in general, leave all those comments and questions in the comment section down below with the hashtag KPUVQ or K-pop University viewer questions. And I may just feature you in the next episode of K-pop University. With that guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. And that's my time guys. My name is Nathan, SYJ Official. Until then, see you guys next time. Bye.